the best four foods for beginners on a carnivore diet. To quote the good Dr. Ken Berry, beef, butter, bacon, and eggs. All these foods have all the essential nutrients your body needs. Mm, no. This is sadly not the first, nor will it be the last video about people making the claim that you can get all the essential nutrients on a carnivore diet. This is factually wrong. And it's not just vitamin C that is missing on a carnivore diet. So let's have a look. To calculate what he is eating on a daily basis, I'm using chronometer. I've put in four large eggs, 50 grams of bacon, one stick of butter, and around 330 grams of grass-fed grass ground raw beef. And I specifically put grass fed in here because many people claim it's way more nutritious. This is the equivalent of around 2100 calories, 107 grams of protein, only 3 grams of carbs and 183 grams of fats. Now in this video I would like to focus on the mineral intake and the vitamin intake. I will not be focusing on the saturated fats that people are consuming on a carnivore diet. That amount will be through the roof and I've done numerous videos about saturated fats already. Preferably, you want to have your saturated fat intake under 10% of your total calories. If you're eating around 2000 calories on a daily basis, 10% of that is 200 calories. One gram of fat has nine calories, so if we divide 200 by nine, we get roughly around 20, 22 grams. But this is not the topic of the video. The topic of the video is to see how many of the essential nutrients people eating a carnivore diet are missing out on. Let's start with the vitamins. He will be running short on vitamin B1, folate, which is vitamin B9, vitamin C, vitamin D, but to be fair, most people will be running short on vitamin D if they don't have enough sun exposure, vitamin E, vitamin K. He's not meeting the recommended dietary intake for five essential vitamins. Let's move on to the minerals. He's not meeting the RDA for calcium, copper, magnesium, manganese, and potassium you're most likely going to not meet the RDA for five minerals as well. And he's probably eating more than just that one meal. And that's a really fair point. But even if you add 1000 calories or more, you will still be running short on all the minerals and vitamins I just mentioned. Let's do a fun experiment here. Let's add 300 grams of beef liver to the mix, which honestly is not very reasonable because people don't eat beef liver on a daily basis. And if you're taking in beef liver in the form of a supplement, shame on you. That's not natural. So with the beef liver added, you can get all the B vitamins included in this graph. But you will still be running short on vitamin C, vitamin D, again, let's not count that, vitamin E and vitamin K. With the minerals, it's pretty much similar, to be honest. You will be running short on calcium, magnesium, manganese and potassium as well. Even if you include beef liver on a daily basis, as many people will claim beef liver is the most nutritious food on the planet, you still will be running short on many essential vitamins and minerals. Just for fun, let's tackle another argument that I see people make quite frequently. Eating a carnivore diet is extreme and not healthy, but so is a vegan diet. An omnivorous diet is the perfectly balanced mix between these two diets. Well, there's a couple of issues with these arguments. It's not really fair to compare a vegan diet or a whole plant-based food diet against a carnivore diet. Why? Well, because we have great human health outcome research stating that a vegan diet can actually lead to many beneficial health outcomes. On the other hand, we have all reasons to believe that a carnivore diet might not be, well, good in the long term. One of those reasons are the saturated fats, for example, that I just mentioned in the beginning. In this video, we just focus on essential nutrients. Essential means that your body cannot synthesize enough of it, thus you have to consume it through your diet. Hence why I didn't include, for example, fibers as well. Fibers are not essential for you. You can live without eating any fiber at all. But is that a good idea? Probably not. The reason being is that we have great human health outcome research suggesting that the higher your fiber intake is, the lower your risk is for getting many of today's chronic diseases. So there you have it. The carnivore diet will go down in history as one of the unhealthiest and worst fat diets. What are your thoughts about this topic? Feel free to let me know in the comment section. Thanks for watching and I'll see you during my next video.